Welcome. I'm very excited to present to you today this row one, um, our uh, new automated large particle isolation sorting and dispensing solutions. At Selenium, our mission is to provide disruptive technologies, products, and services to better understand and master uh, cell biologies. You may know us from the Selen one, our uh, single cell um, isolation and dispensing technologies with application in cell line development and single cell omics. With uh, today, the introduction of the Sphere One, uh, we can actually provide to our customers a solution to isolate and dispense a larger variety of biological specimens, ranging from teeny tiny bacteria, uh, nuclei, any types of cells with the Sphere One, all the way to spheroids, organoids, and tumoroids uh, with the Sphere One. Sphere One relies on precision low volume dispensing, um, image processing and analysis and automation in order to isolate, sort and dispense uh, cellular aggregates. Sphere One is equipped with the Cytop Nano Technologies, uh, which is a gentle and fast uh, solenoid valve uh, drop and demand dispensing system. Typically the drop that we generate are ranging from 100 nanoliters up to one microliter. Uh, with a coefficient of variation below 3%, so highly accurate and reproducible drop generations. Because we want to dispense uh, large uh, cellular aggregates, uh, the capillary that we use have an enlarged uh, aperture when compared to the second one, with diameters ranging from 200 to 600 micrometer. Just like the Selen one, um, our capillary is put in front of a camera, which allows us to take a picture every, before every single drop that we generate. This um, is also useful to track particles inside of the capillary, which we use during a procedure called mapping um, to actually determine empirically and very, very, very accurately the zone, uh, which we call the ejection zone, which corresponds to the volume of the next drop to be, to be made. So, on top of that, we do add the sedimentation zone, which is a buffer area um, that we use to consider, take into consideration the sedimentation that may occur inside the capillary as the robot moves on. So before making a, a single drop, um, the software can actually take an image and analyze it. And this is what we use to actually uh, enable our uh, automated and efficient uh, single particle isolations. In the case you have a single particle in the ejection zone, the robot will move on top of the target well and dispense the drop. When you have you no know, particles or multiple particles, the drop is um, directly ejected um, and recovered into a collection tubes, the recovery uh, tube if you want. Uh, the system can automatically um, save any pictures of the isolated objects, which allows you to go back um, and really check what happened during the isolation process. So combining um, the precision uh, liquid handling dispensing um, with the imaging and the robotics, we actually can achieve an automated large particleization and dispensing uh, solutions that you see here in life. Um, on top of that, the system is capable to asper, uh, aspirate um, uh, large particle suspension from uh, 0.5 to 5 mil. Um, the optics and the illuminations are adapted uh, to uh, large objects, um, and the system is uh, potentially equipped with up to four um, different fluorescent channels for sortings. And the typical throughput uh, at which we isolate uh, large particles um, is roughly 20 per minute. I'm not going to teach you anything uh, with regards to this, so you will all be aware that 3D models are more physiologically relevant and predictive when uh, compared to their uh, 2D monolayer uh, counterparts. This is exemplified with cancer spirits that uh, replicate in vitro a lot of the hallmarks of. Uh, solid tumor. Um, recently, with the avenue of um, organoids, uh, scientists have the possibility to generate um, tissues and organs in a dish. So these organoids are stem cell derived uh, and self-organized uh, 3D constructs that replicate in vitro the phenotype, the morphologies, and to some extent the function of the native tissue it, it replicates uh, in vitro. So these models are definitely more predictive um, 
and very interesting for basic research and uh, drug screening. Um, on top of that, uh, there's strong belief that these organic models uh, will be able to reduce um, and even in certain uh, specific case to replace the use of animal models. So what is the actual uh, shown workflow? So typically you start by generating a bulk uh, culture of spirits. This is interesting because it allows you to use the formation and the culture method for spirits that fits the cell type of interest that you want to use. Um, in the case that you need to culture these spirits for extended period of time uh, for maturation or differentiation, you do not have to worry about losing any material when doing uh, media exchange. Once you have your culture ready, you can collect uh, a suspension of spirits and we recognize to strain it uh, to remove any possible um, cellular debris that might uh, be contaminating the solutions and which will ensure that the spirits that you dispense and isolate um, with, the, with the device will be clear of any debris around it, having um, spirits that are high, very, very clean. You aspirate that solution into the spirit one and run the um, isolation, sorting, and dispensing such that you dispense uh, in each of the well of your target well plate as single spirits. The, acid, the plate that comes out of the spirit, the spirit one is acid ready, meaning that you can directly um, dispense a drug in each of the well, um, incubate it to let the drug effect, um, and then perform your readout. Just to um, show you what this looks like in practice, um, this is a bulk suspension of HEK cells um, that were grown into spirits uh, in liquid overlay cultures with media exchange every second day. You see that the population uh, of spirits we have initially is fairly heterogeneous with regard to their size and their morphologies. That suspension was aspirated um, into the spare one and we run an isolation uh, process dispensing uh, an even individual uh, spirits in each of the well of our target well plates. The dispensing is very gentle, and you see here that the spirits that are dispensed maintain their integrity as well as their viability. The entire process is highly um, efficient and accurate, and you typically reach uh, above 98% uh, uh, single spirit dispense in each of the wells. If you look at now at the scatter plot, you see that in pink, um, the spheroid that were isolated are actually only a subpopulation from the bulk uh, population we had initially. And this is because uh, we have uh, sorting capabilities with regard to the size of the spheroids. We ran three different tests uh, where we set uh, different size gatings for the isolation, and here are the results. In the first case, we set the gates um, or the system, the software, to isolate spirits that were ranging from 100 to 500 micrometers in diameters. And you see that individual spirits actually largely varies in this size, and this is confirmed in the box plot. In the second one, uh, we set the isolation um, to, to sizes between uh, 350 and 500 uh, micrometers. You see that the individual spirits are indeed very large and this is confirming the box plot in the last example we really wanted to to show that the system can be very stringent so we set the isolation uh, to only select um, spirits that were between 200 and 250 micrometer in diameters you see from the macro graph that individual spirits are uh, very similar to one another and with the quantitative data in the box plot, you see that we can really achieve a high homogeneity of the spirits that were isolated with the system in the sphere one. The user can also decide to dispense single spirits per well, but also multiple ones, uh, any numbers that you want. And this allows uh, the user to actually define uh, a biomass per well, which can be useful in certain uh, applications. So what are the benefits of the sphere one? So accuracy up to 100 uh, single spirit dispense in each of the well of your target well plate. B 
because the user can define uh, the parameters uh, for the isolation, um, we can actually uh, isolate very homogeneous populations from a population that is uh, originally very heterogeneous. So one is an open platform. Um, it is compatible with any standard uh, labware, uh, 96 or 3D4 well plates, as well as with uh, specialized and custom labware, such as, uh, for example, lab chips. Um, the target labware is temperature controlled, um, and the environmental uh, chamber is humidity controlled. There is a possibility to add a second uh, dispensing channel, uh, which can be used for bulk uh, media or age. Uh, dispensing because uh, the suspension uh, that is aspirated by this for one can be strained uh, we end up with uh, acid plates that are very clean uh, free of any debris regarding um, applications of the sphere one um, first of all we believe that it can be used uh, for sample preparation for drug screenings uh, you will all be familiar with the standard workflow that is currently used uh, in such cases. So you'll grow your cells, uh, you'll get a single cell suspension, you'll use uh, liquid handling to dispense a given amount of uh, cells in each of the wells of a round bottom well plates that you will have to incubate for a given amount of time to let cells uh, sediment at the bottom of the, uh, of the, of the well and aggregate. Um, this takes some time um, and often give rise to cellular debris that actually uh, are around the spherules. Once you have this, you can drug uh, individual wells, uh, incubate again to let the drug act, and then perform the readout. When you compare this with the sphere one uh, workflow that I just presented to you, uh, we foresee uh, several advantages. So um, the formation of the spheroids is not done directly on individual wells. Uh, you can do that in bulk, which allows you to um, not have any issues with uh, media exchange. Uh, you won't lose any spheroids uh, during media exchange. You do not have necessarily to populate uh, your incubator with a uh, dozen or hundreds of plates to actually just form spheroids. Uh, you can do that in a single uh, flask uh, if necessary. And as I said, the, the plate that come out of the sphere one are acid ready, meaning that you do not have to wait for sphere to form. You can directly drug them as they come out of the sphere one, which would typically allow you to run acids more rapidly, um, stagger them um, such that you can run more uh, acids in a given amount of time, overall accelerating your drug discovery pipeline. Here is a quick uh, pilot experiment where we isolated spherids uh, using uh, the sphere one and exposed them to uh, various concentrations of hydrogen peroxide. Um, from the micrograph and from the quantitative analysis uh, from the images, so you see that uh, above a given uh, concentration, uh, spherids start to die. Because the starting populations that we had is really homogeneous, and the fact that we removed all the cellular debris by pre-straining the, the spherid suspension, uh, we, we loaded into the sphere one, we can be very confident in our assays and have a very uh, qualitative data coming out of it. As a summary, um, we believe that with regard to sample preparation for drug screening, the sphere one uh, offer a unique uh, solution. Uh, accuracy, um, the fact that the spheroids you will uh, test your drug on are going to be highly homogeneous. Uh, the fact that we move all the cellular debris that might uh, contaminate your wells, um, you can be very confident into your, your assay. A second application that we foresee for the sphere one um, is um, organoid culture and manipulations. Most of you uh, will know that uh, starting from uh, either adult or uh, prepotent stem cells uh, using very um, specific and dedicated uh, culture and differentiation conditions, you can give rise to uh, organoids that will mimic uh, various different uh, tissues and organs ranging from the brain, um, the eye, uh, mammary gland, gut, uh, column, um, and so forth. 
So when starting with pluripotent stem cells, uh, the differentiation protocol uh, usually goes like this. You grow your cells, um, you form aggregates, which are called embedded bodies that you culture uh, in suspensions and exposed to uh, very specific um, differentiation conditions. At the end, what you'll, uh, what you'll have is a heterogeneous population with uh, functional and non-functional organoids. Uh, the yield is typically fairly low, depending on the specific uh, protocol you use. Interestingly, um, scientists have recently showed that by carefully selecting uh, by size and by morphology, the uh, pluripotent stem cell aggregates uh, to run through differentiation, you could actually uh, significantly impact the, the yield of mature and functional uh, generations. This leads us to uh, the idea that the sphere one could actually be used to, uh, first of all, optimize uh, your differentiation protocols. So you could generate your um, PACs, uh, spirits, sort them by size, uh, run them through differentiation, and find out which are the ones that uh, give the yield the way which is optimal. In the second step, this would actually be used to standardize your uh, organoid uh, generation, which is very, very interesting. When working with adult stem cells, so you will typically get them from uh, either healthy or diseased patients, uh, you will uh, dissociate the, the tissues, uh, extract the stem cell. Uh, typically, you'll have to embed them uh, into a matrix, uh, normally matrix gel, and run them through a uh, differentiation culture. Um, as per the previous uh, protocols, the yield of functional organoids is uh, fairly low. So we believe that it would be interesting for people to actually, um, at the end of the culture, dissociate the cell, recover in suspension the, the functional and non-functional organoids in the suspension, and use the sphere one to actually select the one that are functional, and dispense them back into, um, into a well. Typically, um, this would require to be able to uh, embed uh, these back into matrix gel. Um, the side drop nano is not capable of dispensing matrix gel. Uh, however, we can use uh, well plates that are preloaded with matrix gel uh, because the order that is uh, on the sphere one can be temperature controlled. We can uh, make sure that the matrix gel remains liquid uh, during the isolations, which allows us to uh, efficiently and reliably uh, embed into matrix gel uh, spirits for further culture and, and assessment. So uh, with regard to um, organoid development, uh, the square one is interesting, uh, first of all, because it will uh, allow you, uh, working with prepotent stem cell aggregates, to optimize your uh, differentiation conditions and standardize your organoid formation. Um, working uh, later on, it could also be used to actually um, select uh, organoids that are functional and, and only those. And, put them in individual wells, encapsulate them back into matrix gel, and run your various assays that you want to do with them. With that, um, I'm very happy to um, discuss uh, with you. The Sphere One is out. Uh, please uh, visit our website uh, for this. We are convinced that these are very unique solutions um, that will really enable you to um, work with uh, 3D cellular model, model that are standardized um, and so forth. See you at the Q&A. Bye-bye.